good day and welcome back. So today we're gonna look at IO errors. Um, we're gonna write a little bit of code, but really what I want you to focus on is the errors already defined in the IO package. And so we're gonna first, before we do that, we're going to look at how you handle the read error, which is that pitfall that I've been into that since the beginning of the this, um, this set of videos on IO read. And then we're gonna to try to talk about the errors and we're gonna sort of see how you can get into issues with one or two of them. And then in the very next video, we're gonna re-implement our mem reader and take into mem store and then take into account these errors that are already defined and we're gonna reuse them. So let's just jump right in and get started. Okay, so I'm gonna save that away. And so as usual, I'm gonna start here with CP minus R C10, you know, whatever. And then I'm gonna copy that to nine and then CD into nine, okay? Um, there's one other thing that I wanna do for this example. Well, I'll come back to that. So let's um, look at the read error issue. So I'm gonna start up my code editor here and then I'm going to CD into CLI as we did before. And to make sure that I'm using the right package here, I'm gonna make this nine, okay? I don't wanna be using uh, something from the previous one. And so um, maybe this should be, so this is IO errors, okay? This section is on IO errors. All right, so now um, we saw before, let's um, rerun this again. And so this part tests the closing. So we sort of know that that part works, you know, reset and closing. So we'll take that out to simplify our code. And so this part, we're sitting in a for loop and let's look at what's happening. We're saying error here we know is gonna be initialized as a nil value. So there's no error. Go do, try to read some data. If you can read some data, of course, you know, print it out and so on. Um, if you can read some data, then go back and um, check and see if there's an error and then keep doing this so long as there's no error. And so when we run this, so we go, go run main, and this is what we see, right? So we see that's all bam, 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 there's no error, and then when there was some error, well, we were able to print that out, and then we didn't go back and read. And then we said that there are two ways we could implement this um, issue here where we check for the error. We could move this from the beginning to the end, and we could do um, essentially this if my keyboard would cooperate on my fingers. And so we said, well, you know what? Let's try and detect if there's an error before we return to the user in terms of if we'd end the file, sorry, not error, but at the end of the file. And then we'll say how many bytes were we were able to read before we reached the end of the file, okay? And then that was another way of handling the same issue. And as you can see here, we did say that we read two bytes and then we also saying, hey, don't come back and read anymore. You know, this is, an end of an, um, this is the end of the file. Of course, if they, they come back and read, then they'll get this zero and still EOF. So, so uh, it's not the end of the world. The important thing and the reason why this is a caveat is if you notice how our for loop is designed is that we do the read and we try to use the bytes. Let's assume this is me using the byte, the data I've read. I try to use it before I go back and check for an error. So you can easily imagine this. If I unroll this loop, what I'm saying is what you want to be able to do when you, um, when you do um, use read is you want to be able to say I'm reading and then I'm going to consume I'm gonna say um, consume the bytes first. Um, so um, if you know zero is less than n, then I know I got some data. So then I should consume it. And I'm not gonna print out the error here. I'm gonna consume it, and I want to only use how much I got. So there. And then after that, then I can say if nil, um, you know, the error not equals to, um, well, rather, let's wrap this back into a for loop. But I, I, think, I think you know where I'm going. So let's do this, that, 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 
Tap, 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 tap. There you go. Bam. Okay. So what I want to do is I do a read and then I check for an if I have more than zero, if I was able to read any data, then I want to use it. And then afterward, I can go back and say, well, if there's no error, then go back and read again. Or if there's an error, you know, I'm not going to read. But notice that I got to consume my bytes. And so now when we run our program, it looks like this. And it doesn't look much different than before except um, thing. But the important thing there is that I consume the data before I check for nil. If you imagine at all, you might be tempted to use this like this instead, which might be how you might, um, you can easily have consume of using, con con um, think thought of using it this way. Um, let's do it here. Ah, come on. Butterfingers or something. Um, for a loop. Um, so I move this up and I, I say I read and then I say if nil um, uh, error not equals to um, if error equals to um, nil um, then I um, I read the data and so for example I might try to read um, let's say 40 right and so this is way more than I've put in there. I only got 10 bytes in there, but I'm trying to read 40. So I'm definitely going to get a end of file error on this first read just because oh, we're implementing it now where you can get the data, but you also get end of file. And so because I'm checking for error first before I consume my data, this is going to um, not work well. And this is the pitfall because you're going to see I'm going to be able to read successfully. But I'm not going to print that out. So let's get to this for a little bit. It just makes things super easy to follow. Okay. So what I'm doing is I'm purposely reading more than I had data that I have in there so that I'm going to get back, you know, a error, even though I get back data. And so when we run this, you're going to see that, no, I didn't print out anything. That's because I checked for an error first, even though I actually got back data. So that's the pitfall. You do not want to check for an error, an error first. So do not do this, <laughs> okay? Bam, bam, bam. Don't do it this way. Instead, the way you want to do it is you want to say, well, is the amount of data I read, you know, do I have, is n greater than zero? And if n is greater than zero, then I know that I got some data. And then I can say, well, okay, if there was an error and that equals the nil, then I'm not going to go back and read. And then I will say, oh, um, FMT, you know, print in end of stream or something like that, you know, so I can do all of that stuff after the fact, but notice I consume the data I read first because I check and see if n is equal to zero, and then I check for the error afterward. So that is the pitfall. I know it seems repetitive, but I, I'm certain someone is going to make that mistake, not um, use check for the error after when they do a read on this read API, or for because you don't know how the person might implement it. So let's go back and see where this is coming from. So I'm talking here about, uh, let's go to the, reader io reader um type here and then it tells you here read up to n bytes into p it returns the number of bytes read you know zero you know where n is greater than or equal to zero less than p and any error encountered even if reads return n less than p it may use all of p as scratch space during the call so it's saying that oh you know, all that extra stuff might be um, thing. So don't count on it. If some of the data is available, but not length P, which is what we have here, some of the available, if some of the data is available, but not the length we specify. So some of it, 10 bytes are available, but not the 40 that we want. Read conveniently, um, conventionally, sorry, conventionally return what is available instead of waiting for more. And that might make sense because uh, if you're reading from a socket or something, you might want to sit around and have blocked the user. Uh, but if it's a file, then hey, 
you know, like in our case, return what you have. There's no more to come anyway. When reader encounters an error or end of file condition after successfully reading n greater than zero bytes, it returned the number of bytes read, which is what we did. It may, this is the key thing. That's where the pitfall come in. It may return the non-nil error from the same call or return the error and n equals zero. So that is where you can get these two different implementation where read may return, you know, non-nil, which would be um, this case where it returns non-nil, um, this case, non-nil non here, when it's read some data but reads the end of file, and then it returns nil even though it read some data and then is on the next time you read then read then you're going to get the error message right and so definitely pay attention to this right it may return the non nil which is an error value for the same call or return the error and n equals zero which is what we do when you finally make the call the next time because we're checking it here we wouldn't have detected it that we're to end when you do a call here because we would have copied it and say, oh, we got some data, we return that. And that's where you would have got the nil value. But then when you call on subsequent time, then we would return zero and non nil. Okay, so please read this carefully. I tell you, it's a tri tricky one. An instance of this general case is that a read returned a non zero number of bytes at the end of the input stream may return either error equals end of file or error equal nil, um, nil, right? Just like we've done, we've I've shown you the two different ways of returning non-zero and still returning either nil, non-zero number of bytes and either returning nil or end of error, okay? So please, please, I know I'm repeating this, but you're gonna find yourself kicking yourself once you run into a problem and a pitfall and you're scratching your head for hours trying to figure out a bug and then realize that I, I mentioned it several times. Or you may thank me every time you code and just remi remember my annoying voice telling you to be careful. Okay, caller should always process the n greater than zero bytes return before considering the error, which is exactly what we have done here. We have checked first for n greater than zero and process that before we look at the error. So I'm not gonna keep repeating this because I think by now you get it. Um, implementation of reads are discouraged, are discouraged from returning a zero byte count with a nil error. So they're discouraged, but remember, people can do it anyway, except when length of P is equal to zero. Of course, that's that's the, that's the that's allowed. If P is equal to zero, then length of P is equal to zero, you're allowed to say that. But ideally, um, they discourage you from returning, um, from implementing read this way, which would really return end of error only when you call it at the end. So they're saying their preference is for us to implement it this way, right? Which put that burden on you to always do this check first, okay? Um, I don't care either way because I'm just, I just always try to remember to just always check like that, okay? I don't care how it's really implemented. All right, so that covers that pitfall that I mentioned and hopefully you pay attention to it. Now let's go look at something else. The second part of our objective for this video. The second part is looking at variables. And so here are some variables. So EOF is the return, is the error returned by read when no more input is available. And so you can see we created EOF here. And we said, um, error, error is new, EOF. But guess what? They did the exact same thing here and created EOF variable for us. So really, when we get here to return, all we really need to do is say io.eof, okay? We don't have to create our own new variable because one is already created exactly like we would have created. So, and the nice thing is that once you know this, now you can check against io.eof knowing that the um, implement implementations will return that value instead of some new other value that you created like we did before. Um, and so there's some other um, variables Error closed pipe is the error used for um, read or write operation on a closed pipe. So that tells you what? Well, for remember when we did here, um, when the pipe was closed and somebody tried to read? Well, we can just do io.error closed pipe. 
and I'm gonna copy that and take it over here to my right function and do the same thing. Right again, that allows the users to code just pretty much the same way and check for the same values against APIs um, implementations of read and write, and with some expectations of some common things like end of file, the file pipe is closed, and so on. And they can check. Of course, you're free to return new errors for other things that fall outside of the ones that they define. Right, so don't think that you can't. You're not allowed to return any new thing. Um, error no progress is returned by some clients of an IO read when many calls to read have failed to return. We don't support that. You know, we could have, if we were not reading from memory, because our memory read is either you have data to read or you don't have data to read, right? You reach the end. Same thing with write. We don't expect it to fail. Um, but what if we had something that was contently trying to pull or it had retried multiple reads before it failed? So you might return this if you have that sort of um, implementation. Error short buffer means that a read requires a longer buffer than was provided. Um, again, this might be um, something where you have fixed size data and you know that how maybe what you want the person to be able to read is 100 bytes and they only give you a buffer of 10. In that case, you could return this as an indication to them like, hey, you know what? Um, I really want you to pass a bigger buffer. Um, error short write means that a write accepted fewer bytes than requested, but fail to return an explicit error. Uh, this would be, for example, that you try to write 100 bytes, it only accepted 10 bytes, and so it was you didn't really specify why is it that you couldn't accept all of it. And we're gonna see, we can expand, expand our mem store to do something like that, but of course we're gonna be able to, we're not gonna use exactly this, because we're gonna know why you're not gonna be able to to accept why we weren't able to accept all the bytes that was written, and we could return an error, an error, not this one, but we're gonna create our own error saying why we couldn't accept all. But if you implemented a this interface and you couldn't really say why you couldn't accept all, then yes, you might be might be appropriate to return this. Unexpected error, end of file. Again, um, this is sort of like, you know, um, you were encountered in the middle of reading. So let's say, you wanted to read a person. So you write, a, you expected a stream or this mem store. Let's say we had a person, we turn it in, uh, turn that person into some bytes, store them in mem store. And then when we try to read it back, instead of the bytes, all the bytes we expected to get to a valid person, we got that part of it. Now, if this was implemented with knowledge of um, a person and how many bytes for a person, it could return that error. Or it could be, that when we read the bytes from here and then give it to our person object and say, try to turn this into a via person, it would be the one that would return this error message. And so we're gonna get to go back and re-implement some of these error using some of these error messages. Like I said, we're gonna use a few of them, which I just did, this one and end the file. And the other ones, we kind of talk about it. And then when we redo our mem store uh, version two, we're gonna use some of these, okay? And, um, so that's it for this video. I hope um, it's memorable because especially for that read problem, um, pitfall, potential pitfall, I should say, because now you know it. Okay, take care and thanks for your time and see you in the next video. All right, bye. Oh, and hit that subscribe button if you're not subscribed. Spread the word if you have friends and family and definitely just take a second to just hit the thumbs up. Okay.